Hello and welcome back. In this episode, we take care of some business in Milan before we head up the east side of Lake Garda and head to the Dolomites. After a great night's sleep, our first order of business is to get connected. Well, maybe first nighttime breakfast. When we arrived in Milan, I had already pinned a Tim's card, so that's the Italian version for cell phones, they use a Tim cell. Pinned it on my offline Google Maps, we headed down, I was able to reuse my SIM card from last year, which means I didn't have to pay for the SIM card, I just had to pay for the data. So we picked up our data. I got three months for 50 euro. Compare that to $15 a day from <coughs> Dallas. <laughs> and uh, you know, just when you go to Europe, get a SIM card in the local area or in the country you're in, it's by far the cheapest way to go. So there are there is the option of eSIMs, which if that meets your needs better, that's another option. Although we found them quite a bit more expensive than actually getting a SIM card once you are yeah, the, in Europe. The advantage of an eSIM is you can have it all preloaded. You land on the plane, turn it on, you're going. Yeah, which is it. nice because we had to kind of swipe some Wi-Fi yeah. where we could find it when we first got off. We the had plane. to find the store. Yeah. With our data freshly loaded, we headed down the streets of Milan to the nearest subway station. After exiting the metro, we had about a kilometer hike to get to where Pepe was, and I must say, I'm much happier with Pepe carrying my stuff than me. I found uh, online last year uh, a place called Moto Touring uh, and we made arrangements with them. They do tours and store motorcycles. So the owner, if I get his name right, Elgio, Elgio uh, he had pulled the bike out and changed the oil and was charging the battery when we arrived. I packed our gear into Pepe while Glenn did the final check on fluids and topped up there in the tires. And we went to start up the bike. Yeah, the battery wasn't as solid as we wanted. After we'd been driving down the road for about an hour, uh, we'd stop just to check the map, and when we went to start Pepe back up, uh, this battery wasn't going to cut it. It was, no. it was groaning hard. So we stopped at an automotive shop and did a few hand gestures to the local people and found out where a motorcycle shop was. Headed up the road to literally the next corner. Pulled in, and then we have a travel tip for you about doing business in Italy. In Europe, businesses often close down for a long lunch hour. One to two hours is the norm. And um, so just make sure you plan around that because there's nothing going to happen during that. Time. Yeah, you'll go and they're going to be closed and they'll mm -hmm. be gone till usually noon till two, one to three. Depends what country you're in. Depends where you are, but uh, yeah, they're going to be closed and they're not coming back. So, um, we arrived at the motorcycle shop to get a battery and this is why the traveler's tip, they were closed. So we sat out and it was really hot, 30 degrees. Yeah. We had to wait half an hour until the staff returned um, to the store and opened the gates and the doors and then we were able to get yep. in. and Picked up a battery, they installed it right then and there and that was the end of the battery issues. So off we go. With Pepe now feeling a little peppier, we were on the road again. Our first day of riding, I didn't want to go too far, but uh, we headed east out of Milan and headed up to a little town on the, on the east side of Lake Garda. Last year, we stayed at a place called Simone on the south end of Garda Lake, and it was a bit of an adventure. Yeah, we hadn't realized when I booked it that it was actually an Italian holiday and we did not realize how popular this little town was. So it was a little crazy. 
You notice the little drawbridge on the left? That's the only way in and out for all the traffic and pedestrians. But it was very magical and very beautiful. The whole point of the direction that we headed out when we left Milan was twofold. We wanted to get to the Dolomites, so we needed to go this way, but along the side, or the east side of Garda Lake, there was two places I wanted to see. One was called Garda Land, which is kind of an amusement park, so we wanted to drive by and, and check it out. As it turned out, we only did a drive-by. We thought we'd save our thrills for the roads and the Dolomites. Uh, and the second one was a church that's hanging on the side of the mountain. We wanted to see that last year, but our route just didn't take us that way, so this was perfect. And so we stopped there, it was 1,500 steps down, and then of course the 1,500 steps back up, so it got our, our blood moving. Our visit to the sanctuary was just the start of our day that would lead us northeast to the very edge of the Dolomites. With us back on the bike, we enjoyed the twisty roads leading down to the shores of Lake Garda. We stopped at the north end of the lake for lunch. With our bellies full, we said goodbye to Lake Garda and headed north through the Cento Valley. This beautiful area is abundant with orchards and vineyards and charming hilltop castles. After passing by Trento, we were happy to get onto smaller twisty roads that would take us to our hotel for the night. Well, thank you for watching this video. We appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. Everybody says it. I guess it does something. We don't know. We're just getting started. So in our next episode, uh, we will enter the Dolomites proper, and that'll be a fun time. <laughs>